Hello everybody, this is Ketchup here. I am back after a bit of a break. Uh, my bunny rabbit was not very well this week and he's doing much better now. So all of my time this week was spent making sure he's alright and thankfully he is and I can get back to work. Hopefully this video is worth the wait and I appreciate your patience. So I'm talking about the turbulence ability. Uh, this is Ketchup speaking. I know Fujin is the mustard main, but I'm a sucker for the classics, right? And I love that air slam that he has in MK4, because uh, he's one of my favorite characters to play in that game. And I didn't play him before because with the preset variations, I didn't like Cyclone. I liked the slam, but I didn't like any of the other moves that it came with. Thankfully, because of the new realm of customs, I've been able to create just a fun variation where I can kind of maximize the slam. I've got turbulence, I've got the Skywalker, you know, and uh, all of it together makes a really fun variation. However, I have found some pretty insane uses for Turbulence with this variation specifically. And that is what I want to cover today. So I think I may as well go over what Turbulence is before I demonstrate its uses. Uh, it blocks them in the air, essentially. If the opponent's in this area and they jump, they get stuck in, basically, the dimensions of the Turbulence. You can do a close version, you can do a medium version, and you can do a far version. And interestingly, if you amplify this, it appears in place, but it follows you as you move around. Uh, which I'll get into a little bit later for general annoyance. But that is the basic. You know, if I hit the opponent and knock them airborne, you'll notice they kind of get stuck. Let me quickly turn them off and wake up, actually, because that is for a little bit later. If I have the turbulence on him, as you can see here, if he's on the ground, it doesn't affect him. But if he's knocked into the air, uh, he'll be affected. And without it, he gets hit down normally. The reason I actually originally took this is because, not just because it's an annoying obstacle that can actually mess up different moves, by the way. If Kung Lao spins in this, uh, he gets stuck in place for some reason. I guess there are other examples there too. I use it because if I use the slam, you'll notice they're point blank. If I try and combo meterlessly from the slam mid-screen, it just doesn't work. They're too far away. But if the turbulence is on screen and I hit them with the slam, as you can see, they're like super close. And I can combo into another slam, amp, whatever it is you want to do. So that was the original reason of me taking them together. However... After spending about a week playing matches against people and really trying to figure out layer upon layer, I figured out some pretty cool stuff. And here is the first option. So something that's possible, some of you might know already, but for those that don't, if I do a turbulence and I fire a projectile, it just goes right through, right? Nothing's happening. However, this is something people don't know a lot of the time, or at least how to do it. Hold down the back forward one, right? So hold down the one input and you actually start to absorb the arrow into the turbulence and it starts to go around in a circle. This actually works for the amplify as well, because if I do turbulence and I hold one and then hold amp, I can create both of them. You can get some pretty kind of impractical combos from this. Uh, it's mostly just the obstacle that you're creating that's the big deal. However, as you can see here, you know, you can do some cool stuff and you could, you know, amplify that as well if you wanted. But my point is that if you create turbulence and amp the arrow, you've now created this giant obstacle. Importantly, it stays on hit. So if you get hit, they don't actually disappear, which makes it even more annoying. You can create these really annoying kind of situations where, you know, if you amp this, create the uh, arrow, go for Skywalker. As you can clearly see, <laughs> you're taking the obstacle with you. And uh, important note is that when you amp this and it does a full cycle, the arrow on its own does not combo, but if it has done a full spin, you know, one single spin, it will stun the opponent and allow for a full combo. As you can see there, it's like crazy, crazy plus on hit, and you can get a full combo from it. So, you know, those kind of like end of round situations where you're trying to create this really annoying obstacle, uh, it goes in and you can combo off that if you're early enough, and it's a really annoying tool. Now, it's a little bit gimmicky for that use, and I do agree, you know, no one's going to sit full screen and let you both do this, and then this, and then start moving around, right? You know, they're going to be doing a little bit more than that in the middle of a match, which brings me on to my other moves of this variation. If you take Air Slam and you amplify it, you'll notice I have time to do both Turbulence and the Arrow before they actually stand up. Now that has quite a few uses. Now if you hit just a normal Turbulence here, or an Air Slam, I think is more appropriate. You can cash out damage on this combo. You can go for the forward 3-1 crushing blow. You can go for the um, empty jump forward jump. You know, may as well just show a couple of applications. A very easy one is empty forward jump, instant forward three into flying kick. Alternatively, you know, this is all very much day one cyclone stuff. This is nothing new. 
do a slight delay into forward three one, you can get the final hit. I do have easy KB turned on because that's just something I'm showing a little bit later down the line. But because they're in the air for so long, you do have time to go for a turbulence and an arrow hold it, set it up, and then you can move in before they stand up, and they actually can't stop it because they're in the air for so long. A more common occurrence of this, I think, is that jump kick into air slam is often a very popular option select, the jump kick OS, because off any height it will combo, and you can amp it for a lot more damage, but you can't really get any pickups from like a really far jump kick like that, so if you do like a jump kick and you confirm it, we're so far away I can't get any combos, but I can set this up. You know, if I've got the life lead here, that's a really annoying obstacle to set up. So one of the uses and one of the first pieces of the puzzle that actually makes it a pretty dangerous setup tool. And on that note, allow me to show you. Now this is something I've been really uh, putting a lot of time into, figuring out how to actually use the spinning arrow in setup potential, because, you know, not a lot of characters have that layer of setup potential, and Fujin, thankfully, does. Now, remember when I said that if you do the air slam, we have time to create both the turbulence and the arrow, you know, before he stands up. You know, I mistimed it there, obviously. But my whole point is that we can use that to its greatest effect in the corner. And it's combining the fact that we get the turbulence, we get the arrow for free, and remember when I said that when the arrow has done a full kind of, you know, one cycle of a spin as it goes round, it will then stun the opponent. So if we're using this on the opponent's wake up, we're combining a lot of things. The setup looks a bit like this. So, it doesn't look like much, but it covers every single wake-up option in the game. And I want to kind of step-by-step -step demonstrate these, but my whole point is that to execute this, you do any launch into your, you know, your uh, air slam. You can do off a jump kick, for example, because the jump kick gives us really good damage in the combo. You do an instant turbulence, instant arrow, and as the opponent is standing up, it hits meaty. If you do it early enough, the arrow has time to do a full spin cycle, and it will cover all of these different wake-up options. But this has been a bit of a deep dive into the Turbulence ability. Uh, there's many layers to it. Using it in a real match, the ability to shut down the opponent's movement. It's a really big deal. You know, if I go AI options, let's have them jump forward. And let's say I've now created Turbulence, right? And they try and jump forward. You'll now realize they can't. This is actually, you know, this is the initial application. All the stuff that I've demonstrated is very much the kind of next level, the next layer. But on its base value alone, having the ability to stop the opponent's movement like this is really important. The fact that it allows for setups when you combine it with the arrow, that is where things get really juicy. And it's a move that I'm not seeing a lot of Fujin players go with right now. Like, I don't want to preach to people. I don't want to tell them what they should and shouldn't mess around with. But I do think that in light of what we now have, you know, the creativity of the custom variations, try and think outside the box a little bit. You know, a lot of Fujin players, they are going with the Arsenal, the Skywalker and the Needle, for example. And that's a really common uh, combination to have because it's pretty much, you know, Cloud Walker expanded. But I think Fujin in particular, he's a character that has a lot of different options for creativity. And I do think that people should maybe give it a look. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see turbulence a little bit more, the more Ultimate starts to roll out competitively. So thanks for watching. Like I said, uh, good to be back. I'm happy that my buddy's okay. <laughs> and uh, I will see you all next time. Take care and much love.